Hey y'all, it's February the 27th, 2017, and I'm back, you know, I made a video yesterday, pretty long video, um, regarding a whole bunch of stuff, but I alluded to, uh, this thing, this thing that people call the left-right paradigm. Um, it's pretty important to know just about what that means. Right? And have time to describe it in detail um, in yesterday's video. And so I thought I would do it today. I wanted to discuss that and also one other thing. Um, to include uh, generational gaps, all right? Different generations. I also want to slip that in there. There's two things I want to talk about because I think that they're connected. You know, I think that they have a lot to do with each other right now. And in that, I think the generational gap, these different generations that keep coming about, are leading to the inevitable destruction of this left-right paradigm. And soon, the left-right paradigm will be non-existent. It won't exist no more. It'll be like a dinosaur. But as for right now, it is kind of a, important in a way to understand what this paradigm is. Now, it's very vague. All right, and so it's a little bit confusing, um, but the best way that I could try to describe the left-right paradigm is this. You got people, and uh, they feel certain ways politically, uh, depending on, you know, their experiences in life. You got a spectrum. It's a left-to-right spectrum. All sort of people in between, but um, what the left, when people are described as left wing, or you know leftists, traditionally what that means is um, that they want to take it easy on people. They want their government to take it easy on people. They want to be very loving and caring and nurturing. You can almost consider it like a motherly type nature. Right, traditionally and this is how th they form their political bases all right their political mantras uh, on the other side you have what's traditionally called or has been called the right wing right wingers right leaning people all right and they're more of the daddies and it, I mean this goes for men and ladies but it's more of a you, you do want the government to mind their own fucking business number one but also you, you do want to be pretty harsh when punishing criminals you do want to be very what they call conservative when it comes to your economics you don't want to you know live in a socialist utopia like Bernie Sanders says which doesn't exist um and that would describe right-leaning people. Like like I said, these definitions are quite vague. There's a lot of people that fall. In fact, pretty much everybody falls into a gray area, an in-between area on this spectrum. However, looking at people in a collective, you can figure out basically how this paradigm works and where people um, fall on the spectrum. All right, if you look at them, study them. However, uh, it, it's an obsolete term. Like I said, this is a this is a paradigm that's soon to not going to exist, anyways. Really, uh, as individuals, I think that none of us should really. I don't think it's very profitable to consider yourself left leaning or right leaning or things like that because there's so many other details. 
uh, to be considered when you're considering your own social nature, your political stances. I mean, you might consider yourself left wing and others who also consider themselves left wing will have perhaps a lot of different opinions than you. All right. So to put yourself in that box, it's kind of retarded. Uh, however, people do put themselves in that kind of a box uh, to this day. All right. They like doing it. You'll hear a lot of people say it. However, it is becoming obsolete. And um, the people we have to thank for it, in my eyes, for this paradigm becoming obsolete, um, for the most part, is this last generation that we've stumbled on in 2017 and, and in recent years. Now, let me explain that if I can try. If I can actually try to do it, um, I want to explain to you that there that there's generations and there's generation gaps, and it seems to be going through something of a quickening now. All right, uh, let's dive into that a little bit. Uh, there was a generation a number of decades ago um, that my parents were a part of. Uh, it's called the baby boomers it's a stupid name but um there was a generation that's called the baby boomers and a lot of y'all's parents are from the baby boomers right and to my knowledge the next generation after that uh is referred to as generation x for some reason i don't know who who decided to give it that letter but they did all right, Generation X. And I don't know if there was a generation between there. You figure that there would be a generation between there because when people talk about baby boomers, uh, they're talking about a lot of differently aged people. All right, so apparently the generation, the baby boomer, the, the whole generation lasted a long time. And then, like I said, to my knowledge, you got Generation X that came along. And I would assume that this generation consists of people who were definitely born in the 80s. Perhaps the late 70s would probably be the cutoff of Generation X. And that was people, I mean, generations tend to, I guess, turn and evolve due to rebellion like the one generation will see the previous generation and say you know what y'all got it all messed up all right and y'all are all messing up and we're just gonna go the other way we're gonna go a different direction with it and guess what we're gonna call this a different generation or you know analysts themselves will call it a, gen a different generation all right so that's what they did all right, they put these labels on us but uh, a lot of people, um, you know, enough people go ahead and agree that, all right, it's a different generation. It's Generation X. There's a lot done, obviously, in that time. There's a lot changed in Generation X. And it's very important to remember uh, Generation X when considering the following generations. All right, like I said, it was, there was a quickening that took place, it seems. Uh, because you had baby boomers, and I don't know when they started, like in the 50s. All right, the 50s all the way until the late 70s, that whole uh, time period, that's when baby boomers were being born at. All right, and then uh, from the late 70s probably to, you know, I would say probably the early 90s the early to maybe mid 90s these were generation x people i would have to say the cutoff is the early 90s all right those people are of generation x and they done their sort of rebellion and you know they made their sort of moves as a generation uh myself included of uh, seeing things uh not add up in our society and wanting to change those things or just wanting to go ahead and disregard all those rules that have been established uh, the establishment that we don't agree with all right speaking of generalities I mean there's people all throughout these uh, 
these different generations who feel their own certain way. They're all individuals and they're all going to have different opinions. But we're speaking in generalities here. We're speaking in generalities today. All right. So Generation X, they done their rebellion from the baby boomers. They realized the baby boomers were not only lazy, uh, but they were they were kind of inconsiderate in a lot of their ways. They were very lazy. They were made to be very soft. There's a there's a generation I guess before the baby boomers. A lot of people call that the greatest generation uh, ever. I don't know if it is. I don't I don't know what it's called. But um, that's what a lot of people say. I don't know. They might have a point. They might have a point with that because those people in that generation before the baby boomer generation, those people were tough as nails, dude. All right, they had to be because, you know, if those people slacked off in the least bit, they were going to die, dude. That's survival, all right? The weaklings uh, that came about before the baby boomer generation, those mofos died. You don't want to hear from them. The, the baby boomer generation, it, it got a little bit softer. It got a little bit lazier. It got a little bit of fat. got a little bit luxurious in nature. All right. And they, they, they kind of lost their way. These baby boomers got lazy. That's not to say that Generation X after them didn't continue the process. They did. It's, it was even more lazier of a generation. These are people who would not survive a hundred years ago, most of them, all right? Because we've been made very soft, and I'm included in that. I'm in the Generation X. We've been made to be very soft. We don't know how to survive for the most part. That's not to include everybody, but speaking in generalities, that is the case. That is the case. And then we go to the next generation, a term that a lot of y'all probably have heard before. It's called Millennials. I don't know why the generation before that was a letter. It was Generation X. But the next generation after that, they said, forget letters. These, these children are called Millennials. And that's basically just to describe um, anyone who was born... I, I suppose from the early 90s to I guess I would have to say the mid 2000s like to early 2000s to about 2005 would probably describe uh, millennials those are the millennials these are people who a lot of them are in college right now they're in their college age days those people right now are, are acting the damn fool. And like, like I said before, this isn't to say all of them, right? It's not all the millennials who are acting like a plum fool out there who absolutely have not a single clue about what is going on in the world, right? Generation X. They weren't a whole bunch better about knowing what was going on in the world, but they were better. We are better. Millennials, for the most part, seem to be absolutely clueless. Right? And it's unfortunately. Uh, the thing is, like I said, it's a progression, right? You had the generation uh, before the baby boomers, tough as nails, all right? Knew how to survive. They came from depression days, all right? Then you got. The baby boomers, and they were softer. They were made w weaker, and they, they really couldn't fend for themselves good. Uh, they let us down. The Generation X after them, even softer, even lazier, uh, even weaker. And, and they let the, the next people down. All right, it, it's, it's a slow progression, a slippery slope down to Lazyville, down to worthlessness. All right. But hold on, uh, because it's going to get better. Hold on. We got uh, the Millennials, which is another generation. It yet again gave us even lazier people, even softer people. I mean, the softest of the soft. In fact, the softest that we could possibly have developed. 
right? It could get no softer and no weaker. It could get no f more fragile. And a good way to observe this is to find clips on the internet. You're going to find lots of clips on the internet of people who are in college right now, in the university system right now, crying their eyes out because of who, who won and lost the presidential election, crying their eyes out, looking for safe spaces. I swear that that's a word. People made up that word, safe spaces. They go to, <laughs> they go to colleges in order to be safe, right? In order to feel all warm and fuzzy inside and spend all their money, spend all sort of money that they don't have to go to college to not know what the hell they're doing, to not, to not get out of college and get any sort of good job. They have no idea what they're doing. They're doing it presently, these millennials. They always have something to cry about, and they will cry. Tears will be shed uh, when it comes to the millennials, right? Not all. There's some millennials out there that are stand-up, strong individuals. Can't take that away from them. The generation that they uh, belong to is just filled with rampant crybaby little-ass girls. And I can't even say that they're to blame for this because, like I said, it's been a progression. We've been fostering this very soft, this very gender-confused uh, type of nature in our society for some reason. And it hit its tippy-top. It hit uh, the very uh, tantamount uh, point that it's going to get to in the millennials. It's a sad thing. It's a very disturbing thing when you see the behaviors of a lot of these Millennials. Uh, it's very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. But uh, it's kind of reached its tail end recently. Like I said, uh, the cutoff date for Millennials is pretty much the mid-2000s, like 2005 probably. After that... And even before that a little bit, you have a another generation, right? The generations are happening quicker and quicker now. This generation is called Generation Z. And I know a lot of y'all haven't even heard of it yet. I haven't ever heard of it till recently, to be honest. Uh, but the thing is, I've heard of it so much that it seems to be that it's an official thing. That's an official generation. It's called Generation Z. It's kind of odd that it went from Generation X, which is a letter, to Millennials, which is not a letter, back to Generation Z, which is a letter. But actually, I think it is kind of appropriate because most of these Generation Z people, very, very young people, were born to Generation X uh, individuals. All right, um, that's not necessarily the case for the Millennials. They were born from all sort of different people, I guess. All right, the Millennials were very uh, mixed up in this way. They were born by Generation Xers. Some were born by baby boomers. Um, it's kind of confusing. Generation Z. Pretty much exclusively born to Generation Xers. Alright. And you can really tell because these Generation Zs out here, I find them kind of inspiring. In the way that, shoot, <coughs> uh, political correctness more and more and more and more has been shoved down our dang throats. Alright. More and more and more as the generations have gone on this this so-called political correctness you can't say the wrong thing you can't have certain ideas and if you do you can't express them here in this country it's an attack on free speech it's been that way for a while now for a long while now All right and honestly this is probably one of the main factors uh, in my mind that leads to the softness the weakness the emotionalness of the progression of these generations the, the 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 farther that they go on the weaker that they get the more uh the more tears that they have 
All right. But we finally reached Generation Z. And that's a whole new animal right now. Because here's the thing. Uh, political correctness has been pushed on us and pushed on us and indoctrinated into us and ingrained strenuously into our brains through these damn public schools and this pop culture and it's been pushed on us and pushed on us and pushed on us until uh, as people we just couldn't take it no more. This Generation Z just couldn't take it anymore. Right? It becomes so absurd to be politically correct and so unadvantageous that Generation Z, I'm proud to say, uh, is basically saying, hey, fuck all that. All right? Don't want it. Don't want to be politically correct. We don't see any sort of future. We don't see anybody making progress, right? We don't see a reason to not rebel against everything. We don't see a reason for that. And so you got Generation Zers, little young kids out here, and gosh dang it, they just make me proud. I have to be honest with you. Speaking in generalities, these uh, Generation Z little children are making some serious strides uh, in lots of ways, but uh, most importantly, I think, in the way that they completely devalue political correctness. They don't care about it. They're tired of being told black people are worthless. They're tired of being told that white people uh, hate them. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They're tired of being told all these lies because they've been just born into a bizarre world that after a, after a while you got to figure out that nothing, none of this adds up. So Generation Z, I'm not saying that they're all geniuses. I'm not saying that. But they are smart enough to figure out that they're being lied to constantly by these these television news channels. These Generation Zs don't watch news on television. They have no need for it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The pop culture and stuff, they're just refuting it. Uh, here, here's a good example. Uh, I know a lot of y'all might have seen these sort of things on the internet because these Generation Z children, unfortunately, they're all over the internet. But here's the thing. Uh, I've never seen so many Hitler jokes. All right, People in my day, uh, for the most part, especially out in public, uh, were terrified of making uh, Hitler jokes. Or, you know, jokes of that nature. Racist jokes. Rape jokes and things like that. They were still said uh, behind closed quarters and everything. But it wasn't so public because people were scared. Like I said, they were scared of uh, being politically incorrect, having their lives ruined and stuff. Uh, they were scared of all that. So uh, making these sort of comments and, and, and jokes, uh, that just wasn't, it wasn't flying for a while because the political correctness was so palpable uh, that you just couldn't get away from it. At this point, you have Generation Z, and they don't care at all. They'll, they'll say all the racist jokes that they could possibly say. They'll say all sort of Hitler jokes. They'll say that they're Hitler. It, it does not matter anymore with this new generation. They're going all willy-nilly. And yeah, there's a lot of chaos involved in it. Sure, but I respect it. I look forward to seeing more progress out of Generation Z. I'm very excited about it. The reason is because their rebellion is so strong. They may not know how to survive out in the wilderness. They may not know how to create homes for themselves and, and families the way that... In fact, I'm sure that they don't. Because most of these uh, Generation Z children, they don't have families, dude. Their families are broken, all right? Family I come from is broken, dude. Uh, most of the people in my generation, their family is broken, dude. It, it could not survive. The millennials, they come from absolutely broken homes, too. Generation Z is off the scale. They don't hardly know what a family is, but you know what they know how to do is rebel. They know how to do a lot of drugs, too, because people have been forcing drugs down little children 
uh, children's throats for a while now. So what Generation Z knows how to do best, and I hope that they continue to magnify this, is they know how to rebel. They're tired of the bullshit lives that they've been fed. And that's what they're doing right now. And uh, I wish them all the best. And I'll be right there with them. You know, I think it's very significant that they were born from Generation X. I see a lot of Generation X in Generation Z. I see the millennials as wanting to rebel from Generation X and therefore becoming softer and more delicate and more like little girls and little puppies. Uh, and then Generation Z came along and said, you know what? Hitler jokes. Uh, anything. Whatever we want. We're going to say whatever we want. Why? Because the ship is going down. Who cares? Who cares? When, when you say make America great, when you say that to some Generation Z, Z people, they, they don't have no clue what you're talking about. Not a single clue. They, they have. There's never been any promise for America for these Generation Z years. All right? So they're going balls to the wall right now. And intellectually, I think that they're going to... They're going to... Uh, <clears throat> they're going to come by a, a whole bunch of new territory and there's going to be a, a lot of change that comes about from these young kids out here. All right? And I know a number of young kids in my family and, and without my family belonging to this Generation Z. And let me tell you something, there's some firecrackers. There's some firecrackers. Anyways, I got to end up this uh, particular conversation with y'all. All right. We're about to hit the 30 minute mark. But if you even remember at the very beginning of this conversation, I was talking about the left right paradigm. All right. And how this has been an established uh, uh, little piece of reasoning that people uh, that people have used uh, in, in order to categorize people uh, based on their political affiliations and their social standings and stuff. Uh, it, it's called the left-right paradigm. All right? A lot of people have been put on the left. A lot of people have been put on the right. A lot of people put themselves on the left. They call, they call themselves left-wing. They'll call themselves right-wing. It's kind of retarded. When you think about it, uh, the extreme of either one of them, if you're extremely on the left or you're extremely on the right, you are goddamn retarded, all right? You are a retard. You completely missed the boat. Completely. All right. What, what in fact that you're trying to aim for, whether you know it or not, is right there in the middle. That's where you want to be at. I don't want to go into a whole bunch of detail right now because it's a whole different video. But right there in the middle, you know what you're going to find? Jesus. It's right there in the middle. Jesus has always been right there in the middle because when you consider... Uh, the nature of Jesus, he has all the nurturing qualities that you could ever want. He also has all the disciplining qualities that you could ever want. He contains all the qualities. He contains the whole entire spectrum. So Jesus is right in the middle. And that's what everybody should be aiming for. But, you know, people get confused. People get real confused. They like their spot on the right. They like their spot on the left. Thing is, when it comes to these days and the fact that generation z is here this whole paradigm has not only become obsolete but you can understand that it never really was necessary it's, and it's being exploded right now uh, before we finish it up i want to describe something and i don't have like a chart uh, what i would like is like a linear chart that goes from left to right to show you exactly what i'm talking about but what's taking place right now in this day is this. You still have people on the right. You still have people on the left. All right. What's happening is this. There's people on the left who uh, they're having to buy into more and more uh, bullshit propaganda from their little leaders and stuff. None of it makes sense. It makes even less and less sense. They want to be communists. They want to live in a communist utopia that does not exist and has never existed. All right. Uh, 
these people and they cling on to that they want to be victims they don't uh, just speaking in generalities they don't want to have guns they don't want anybody to have guns they want all the criminals to have guns they want to be raped on the daily right they're becoming more and more extreme with their outlook these leftists uh, I don't know why but it's like a tailspin and they're spinning out of control the important uh, aspect of all of that to realize is over there on the other side you have people on the right uh, and when these people on the left go so far extreme to the left what it does is it causes the these people on the right to reconsider their values and come more actually to the center and that's what's happening you're having a big movement of people on the left going way off the deep end and completely going full retard you have people on the right who are being forced more into the center because of this wave. And then you also have people on the right who are going more right just to kind of create a balance. All right, a little bit of a balance. Those people are going more retard. All right, go, to go all the way to the right is to be a full retard. To go all the way to the left is to be a full retard. All right, so there's some people going to the extreme right. Uh, for the most part, people on the right are headed towards the center which is where they need to be right and it's a beautiful thing and then you have some people who are on the left who realize that all these people on the left are going down a shithole and so they're actually going to the center as well there's a whole bunch of people in this left right paradigm who are meeting in the center as we speak and once they finally consecrate and and join together, which is inevitable, the left-right paradigm won't exist no more. We'll have no use for it. And uh, God bless them. The generation that we have to, to thank for that the most is Generation Z. They're going to make it obsolete. They're going to make it to where nobody even mentions left and right anymore all right and i'm looking forward to those days i believe those days are going to make america great again that is if we don't have nuclear bombs dropped on us and stuff i hope that we don't anyways it's <coughs> it's february the 27th 2017 i'm gonna have to holler at y'all later